Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be taking apart the front hub of this electric XP right here. So if you have one of these electric XPs and your front wheel is not spinning very good, it could just be that the hub is, is kind of grimy. So I'm gonna show you how you can pull it all apart and rebuild it. Let's go. So the first thing you're gonna need to do when you wanna work on the front wheel is we're gonna need to take off the front wheel. So if you look real closely way down in here, you need to get these little 15 millimeter bolts off. And you guessed it, the best tool to get those off is a 15 millimeter wrench. I like to use these ratcheting ones and I'll leave a link in the description below to a 15 millimeter ratcheting one. You can also use a crescent wrench or something like that to get these off. But as you can see, this is just a whole lot easier. And then you just want to loosen that up pretty good. You don't need to take it all the way off. Inside here, there's a little safety washer that has a little slot that notches in. So you just need the nut far enough away so that you can back that safety washer off. And then on the other side, there's another one right here. So let's go ahead and take that one off or really just loosen it up enough almost to the end but not all the way and then just pop those safety washers off and then you can see in here these are those safety washers and if you look it's got this little hook on it and that little hook is going in here into these little holes on the dropouts that way if the nuts ever loosened up the wheel won't fall off your bike let's pull this whole hub apart and see what's in here so the first thing you want to do is just lay out a nice cloth down so that when we pull the bearings out, they don't go rolling all over the place. It's always good to have a, a cloth down and that way too, the axle doesn't damage the counter that I'm working on here. And then go ahead and take these nuts all the way off now. So you can take the nut and the little safety washer off and just set those aside and then just do the same on this side. So we want to take those all the way off and then I use one of these little scribes. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below to a set of these guys. Uh, they're super useful and just good to add to your tool collection. And then just go ahead and dig out the little rubber dust caps. So here's the smaller one that's on the side with the disc brake rotor. And then on this side, there's a bigger one. And if you kind of squeeze it first, you can use it and just kind of dig that off. So we're taking this little rubber gasket thing off and just set that aside. And then the way we're going to pull the axle out is you're going to need a 15 millimeter cone wrench. And I'll leave a link in the description to one of these. And then you're also going to need a crescent wrench. Um, this is a 17 millimeter is this nut. So if you have a 17 millimeter wrench, that works. I just use a crescent wrench for this one. And then we're going to take this apart from the side that's opposite of the disc rotor. So we want to get onto this side here. And then this little part that's right in here is the actual cone. If you can see down in here. So on this inside, and you'll see these, these two flat spots on it. And then you want to grab your cone wrench, which is just a really thin wrench. And we're going to slot the cone wrench onto the cone, onto those flat parts. And then we're going to grab this top nut and we're just going to push it away from us. So it's unthreading this top nut and go ahead and take this locking top nut all the way off. And we're just going to take that off completely and set that aside and then underneath it is this little spacer right here so we want to take that off and set that aside also and then you're going to put your cone wrench onto the cone again and holding the cone wrench on tight onto this cone we can flip it over and then we want to grab this nut on this side with our um, crescent wrench and just turn it a little bit counterclockwise 
till this cone on this side loosens up. And once that's nice and loose, we can actually unthread this. And we want to take this cone all the way off completely. So just keep unthreading it. And what I'm doing is I'm holding this side in and keeping it pushed in so that the bearings don't all fall out of that side. And while you're pushing that in, completely unthread this cone and it has this little metal dust cover on it too. So we want to take that all the way off. And my bearings are going to be super covered in grease because I actually already did this whole thing and then lost the video footage. But that's kind of sometimes what happens. So you'll see inside, yours may not look this greasy because I just redid this one. Um, but the, the, the bearings will be in here with some grease and stuff. And what you can do at this point is kind of lean it over. And I'm just going to dig out those bearings. And just let them flop onto the cloth. You just want to make sure that they don't go rolling away from you. So mine are super gooey. There's nine of them in total. Oh, one guy's hanging out in there. Bloop. So now all the bearings are out of this side and then we can flip it over and you can actually pull the whole axle out now and just set that aside. And then there's bearings on this side too. So you can go ahead and pull all the bearings out from this side and just drop them onto the cloth that's underneath. So I like using this little scribe just to dig them all out. And then take all the bearings out so that now you just have this cup that's in there and it's all greasy. And then just grabbing a, another cloth, just go ahead and clean all that out really good. Until these cups are just nice and clean. And I'm gonna clean them out on both sides. I'm just cramming the cloth in there and getting all this grease and stuff out and just clean them out until they're all nice and clean and all the old grease is out of there and then you'll see you have these nice clean cups in here if you can see I'll try to get in there see this line that's forming right there that's where the bearings are actually rolling onto the cup so the bearings are sitting in here and just rolling and spinning as the wheel spins. And they start to cut this groove into there. Now my wheel only has a couple hundred miles on it, so this groove's not too bad. Um, but this can get really kind of cut in and, and pocketed. And that's usually what causes these things to wear out. But cleaning them and rebuilding them like this can definitely help. Because dirt and grime and stuff gets all in there. And that can prematurely wear them. And I got grease all over the place. So now what you can also do is take this cone that we took off the other side. And we want to clean all the old grease off of that really good too. And then you can see, see if you look really close onto this cone too. There's another little line that's cut right into there, if you see that line. So the bearings are sitting on this cone, and this cone is pushing them into the cup. And then they're rolling around in there as the wheel rolls. So these ones are still pretty new, so the groove's not that bad.
but we want to clean all the old dirt and grime off of this. And then you can also take your axle and just wipe all the old grease and grime off of the axle. And this still has the cone attached to the other side. So now that the axle is all super clean, the cones are clean and the cups are clean. What I'm going to go ahead and do is all these little bearings down here. We want to clean all of those off too. So if you just take the bearings and kind of roll them around in the rag a bit, it'll clean them all off. And then if you do need to, you can inspect your bearings and see, make sure they should be nice and round. But if they're all pocketed and nasty looking, then you can replace these bearings. And this tool here is a spoke measuring tool, but it also has these bearing measuring holes in it too. And I can put a link in the description to this, but I can just show you, this is the quarter inch hole. And if I push a bearing through, you can see that it's a quarter inch bearing. So that's kind of how you measure them. Just get one of these measuring tools and measure your bearings. So I'll leave a link in the description to new quarter inch bearings if you want to replace all your bearings. They'll usually come in like a jar of like 50 or 100 or something. So you'll have extras. But if you just want to reuse the same bearings, just go ahead and clean all of them off to get all the old grease and grime off. And there's going to be 18 total. So there's nine bearings on each side that sit in each cup. And make sure these bearings don't roll anywhere because they can be hard to find. So now I have my nice little bearing pile there and we're going to put the hub back together. So what we want to do is starting on the side that has the disc brake, we're going to grab some of this poly lube 1000 and I'll leave a link in the description below to this. This is the park tool. They call it the poly lube 1000, but it's just, it's just grease. So go ahead and open it up. And if you have a brand new one, you'll just have to snip this little part off so that you have a hole there. And then on this cup side that's in here, go ahead and just squirt a bunch of that into there. And you don't need a ton, but you want a pretty good little coating of it. And it's pretty sticky, gooey stuff. And then once you have a good glob of it into your cup like so, now we're going to actually pop our bearings back in there. And you can just take one bearing at a time and just push them into the grease that you just put. And when I'm just pushing them into the cup and the grease is sticky enough that it's going to hold them all in there. And you can count them as you're going. We want to do nine total. So now I have nine bearings sitting in there. And then go ahead and grab your axle again. And you're just going to push the axle right through the middle and all the way out the other side so that those are sitting in there nice and neatly. Now we want to flip the wheel over, but we want to hold the axle in or it'll just fall out and some of the bearings might fall out too. So go ahead and while you're holding that in, then you can actually grab the axle from this side. So now it's still pushing in and you can set the wheel down on the axle and now that it's setting down, the, the, just the weight of the wheel is holding it in. And then we want to grab some of our Poly Lube 1000 again. And squirt a bunch into this cup. And again, you don't need a ton of it. Just enough to kind of fill about half the cup or so. And then just grab your bearings again. And then these guys are just going to go back in there and you should have nine remaining bearings or if you're using new ones, just count out nine of them. 
and just pop them all back into that cup. Till they're all till they're all back into this cup here. And then while you're holding, and I'm holding the axle from the other side. And then you want to grab your cone again, and we're going to thread the cone back on. So just thread this on all the way down. And I'm holding the axle from the other side with my hand over here so that the axle doesn't sit there spinning as I'm threading this. And just keep threading this down until it goes all the way in and until it's about finger tight or so. And it's going to push the bearings and the grease and everything all together. And I just go till it's about finger tight. And then once it's finger tight, it's going to hold itself in there. And as this thing spins, it's going to move all that grease around and pack it all back in. So now what we want to do is grab this little spacer that we took off and just slide that over. And then this 17 millimeter locking nut again, and we're going to thread that back on. So now I'm just holding the axle from this other side and just threading this back on basically until it's about finger tight. And then to get it fully tight, what you need to do is grab this 15 millimeter cone wrench again. We're going to slide that back over onto those two slots that are just on the cone part. So if you can see, see how those flat spots and I'm just sliding this back on. And then now we want to grab this locking nut on the top with our crescent wrench. And now I'm going to pull them towards me to tighten them into each other. So you just basically what I'm doing is I'm tightening the cone into the nut from where I set it. And then it should spin pretty freely, but what it often does is it actually backs the cone out a little ways. So it spins nice and freely, but if I actually grab onto this axle and I'm pushing it this direction, I can feel it's knocking in there. So when this is spinning nice and freely, but when I pull on this, it's knocking, it means that this cone is set too loose. So to tighten that, we basically want to grab our cone wrench again, slip it back over there, onto those flat sides of the cone and then I'm going to grab this locking nut and now I'm going to push it away from me so that loosens up the locking nut and just back that off a little and then while I'm still holding the cone wrench onto the cone I'm going to grab the locking nut from this side and I'm just going to tighten it a bit till I feel it snug up onto that cone that's on the other side and then I want to tighten this locking nut back down until it's about finger tight and then go ahead and get your wrench on it. And now I'm pulling them towards me until it tightens up again. And we want them pretty snug here. And now when I spin it, it should spin nice and freely. But when I grab just the axle and I move it forward and back like here, I don't hear any knocking. So ideally we want this spinning nice and free and not feel any knocking. If you spin this and it's really stiff and firm, then that means that the cone is cinched down too tight and we need to loosen it back up. But if I spin it and it spins real freely, but I move the axle forward and back this direction and it's knocking, then that means it's too loose and you just got to kind of start over like I showed you with the cone wrench and the crescent and readjust the hub till it spins nice and freely. And when I grab the axle, there's no knocking. So that's about how it feels now. So now you just grab this rubber gasket again and just slip that back over. It doesn't have to be on there. Perfect. It doesn't even really have to be on there at all, but 
might as well just put it back on there and it kind of slots into there and kind of just hangs out it's not the most expensive wheel and then on the disc brake side we grab the smaller rubber one and just slide that back over and just slot it back down now what you want to do is we're going to grab these safety washers that have this little hook on them and we want to make sure that the hook is pointing towards the wheel so just slide that back over onto one side and then grab the little axle nut again and just thread it on a few threads so it's not going to fall off you don't want it on there too tight so when we put the wheel back on there's plenty of room in here and then on the other side just do the same thing grab this little safety washer make sure the hooks pointing towards the wheel and then just screw the other nut back on a few turns then we can go put this wheel back on the bike so to put the wheel back on the bike what you're looking for is you see these little holes that are under here and you can see it from the other side so those little locking washers those are what are going to hook into those holes and they're just kind of safety washers to help keep the wheel on. So what I'm gonna do, I'll try to do this with a close up, is just slide the wheel back on, and then you wanna guide the brake rotor back here into the caliper, and then slot the axle up through the dropouts down here where my thumb is, and then we wanna rotate these little safety washer things so that the hooks go in the holes and that's on both sides i'm doing it over here too and then you can kind of finger tight the nuts down and once the nuts have gone in a ways the wheel will hold itself on there and then you just want to make sure that when you're putting the wheel back on that it's pushed all the way up into the dropouts. That's gonna center it. And then just go ahead and lock these nuts back down with your 15 millimeter and make sure to get them on both sides. And then our wheel's all back in. Good to go. So hopefully now your wheel's spinning all nice and smooth and you know how to rebuild a front hub, which is awesome. If you wanna learn more about the Electric XP on how to work on it, I have a whole playlist right here with just different repairs that you can do to keep your Electric XP running awesome. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.